This is Mid-Atlantic Women in Agriculture's Wednesday webinar, Snap It, Then App It. Our presenter today is Michelle Walfred, Communications Specialist with the University of Delaware. All archived presentations, along with all upcoming presentations, can be found at our website. And a special thank you to our sponsors. Michelle will not be taking questions during this archived presentation, but she has provided her email address and questions can be directed to her. And the PDF slides that she mentions in the presentation can be found at our website. Thanks for listening. And images now really matter. Uh, we have websites, blogs, probably most of you, if you had any kind of a business, you have a Facebook page. You may be on Twitter, you may be on Instagram, and we're posting events, we're posting products, we're, we're advocating about agriculture, we're putting, um, we're trying to win the war because uh, on social media a lot of people have been attacking ag, or it's not as flattering as it could be, and we can talk all we want, but pictures do speak more, or more than, than words. Um, you can really tell a story with photographs, and so you, you want to um, really pay attention to, to making your, your photographs stand out, because when, when people are walking or flipping through their newsfeed really fast, or they're looking at websites, or they're walking across a brochure rack, they, you have like three seconds to get their attention, and if you don't get their attention, you've lost them. So this is why you want to have strong photographs, um, and there's lots of different ways that you can um, make those photographs matter. There's three main sources that you can get photographs. You can buy them, so you can go to like iStockPhotos.com. There's lots of places that will sell you photographs. You pay for them. Um, some are more than others. You can get bulk rate. Uh, when you buy a photograph, it's as if it's yours. You can use it. You can use it on your brochure for your business. You can put it on your website. You have rights to that photograph. You can also go to Creative Commons, and Creative Commons is photographers like myself. When I upload pictures, say to Flickr, I will relax my license. I won't make it copyrighted. I will say, oh, you can use it as long as you're not going to make money, which is the most common one. As long as you're not going to make money with it, you can use my photograph. You can change it from color to black and white. You can crop it. You can overlay text across it. I'm sort of donating it to the world. Other photographs I take, I want to keep my copyright. But where that's where you want to go if you want to get a photograph and you're not sure if it's copyrighted or not. It's a wonderful site. You type in barn, American flag, whatever you want to do. The picture will come up, and all those pictures using those search terms are free for you to use, but you do have to attribute the source. You have to say source of this photo is. You should. Um, that's sort of the deal. So it's a great way to get your name out there as a photographer or as a business. So if you are selling peaches and there's a high schooler doing a book report on, or a report on peaches, and she wants to blog about peaches, she might find your photograph because you've made a Creative Commons, then she has to source you. Source of this photograph was um, Holloway Orchards. So it's a way of getting your name out there. So, or of course, if you own the photograph, then you can do whatever you want with it as far as um, the internet's concerned. But if you're taking pictures of minors, you must, and that's anything, anyone 18, eight, younger than 18, you must use a photo release of some sort. You can download them. You can just Google them. Um, don't put pictures of children up unless you've gotten permission to use them. Um, this is what Creative Commons looks like. I typed in farmer's market. I labeled it non-commercial up here. Um, I'm showing that I don't want to make money off of it. I just maybe want to use it in my blog or I want to put it out on Twitter. So this is saying, that just show me photographs that I can modify, change, build upon that have to do with farmer's market. When I hit enter, all of these photos come up. So it's a wonderful source for finding the photographs that you can use. Again, you must give the, the photographer credit. So this is a little bit about the licenses and how it breaks down. I'm going to skip that. 
this is what I shoot with. I have an iPhone 6. Um, I shoot with my Nikon a lot, but I have found it's heavy. I don't always have it with me. I always have my cell phone with me. Always have my cell phone. And as I started becoming familiar with apps, I have full, full-fledged Photoshop Creative Suites. That's a complicated program. I have found that now what I start doing is I shoot with my Nikon. You see I have a little SD card adapter plugged into my iPad. This does not work with a phone. It has to work with the tablet. But I take pictures with my Nikon, put it in that reader, and send it right to my iPad. And that's where I do probably 90% of my photo editing now. And as well as pictures I take with my iPhone just drop automatically in. If you shoot with a camera, with an SD camera, um, save it somewhere. You want to keep your originals sacred um, in a folder on a hard drive, on an external drive, someplace where they're not going to get edited, they're not going to get tampered with. I always keep my original photos sacred, then I import them back. I might load them up on my desktop a second time so I have so I can play with them, or I'll import them into my, my iPad in this case. If you do delete a photograph, it's best, I don't really know the technical reasons why, that it's best to not delete them off of, from your computer, but to delete them, put the SD card back into your, um, into your camera, and then reformat your camera or delete it that way. So it's just, just some safety things. So these are some of the phone apps that I use. Um, we're going to talk, if I can, talk about most of these today. This, is, this screenshot was taken a while back. I'm a phone app addict, so I've probably in all, I've spent maybe $50 on all of these. Um, most of them are free. Most of them are, if they, if they cost, they're between, I think the most expensive I've ever downloaded was $5.99. Some are free to an extent, and then you have to buy uh, maybe a dollar or $1.99 for some extra features. Um, Snapseed is my, probably my go-to. It is an Android, it's a Google product. It is my go-to, number one favorite app of all time. A lot of apps, for instance, you see the photo editor right here. That's, that's uh, an, an Avery. Um, Avery is a photo, big photo editing uh, software. It's, it's built into Flickr by default. But a lot of people will build on Avery and call it something else. So you'll see a lot of apps are nothing but Avery under a different name. Uh, and Avery is good. I use Avery mostly for red eye correction. It's not my go-to one, though. It's, it does the basics, but Snapseed just blows it out of the water, in my opinion. Snapseed is 100% free, and it, there's no um, uh, hidden fees to any of it. It's amazing. Um, Waterlog is an app that's only iOS, unfortunately, and it allows you to take a photograph and make a watercolor of it. So if you've got a shop or a produce stand, you can take pictures and you can actually make watercolors, get them framed, and this would be like a value-added product that you could sell. Camera Plus is a very good all-purpose editing app. I also like Enlight. Photoshop has come out with a series of break, they've taken their mega $300 photography software that you use on a desktop and they've broken it out into pieces that are now separate apps, and they're 100% free. Blows my mind. The only thing you have to have is an Adobe um, email. So you have to create an Adobe account, and once you have an Adobe account, you sign in, and you can use Photoshop Express, Photoshop Mix, Photoshop 6, which we're going to show you. You can lose 10 pounds in a matter of a couple phone swipes. It's really cool. You can change your face. You can do all kinds of things like that. So the Photoshop is just really terrific. And a lot of the other ones are very similar in that they have all kinds of different filters. If you used Instagram, even Facebook has jumped on the bandwagon now. You can go in and you can, and you probably have all seen them, different kinds of filters that make them look vintage, grunge. You can add, make them look like they're shot in the 1960s. Why anybody wants to do that? I lived in the 60s and 70s. I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. But some people like that vintage look. So there's just loads of them out there. 
Another one that I'm really fond of, for those of you who have Android and can't download Waterlog, this is actually a better app. This is called Brush Stroke, and it can turn your photographs into paintings, oil paintings, watercolors, etc. And then we all, if I have time, we'll talk about memes. What are memes? You've probably seen Grumpy Cat. It's a cat, and then they, they have text over top. And we're now using memes for putting vital information in and not clogging up our social media posts. So I can put the time and the date of a workshop. I can put an inspirational quote. So all memes are is a text overlay that looks dressy and looks professional. And word swag is, is you have to pay for that. It's $3.99, well worth it. But I think it's only iOS, although I've heard they're going to go to Android. And then Adobe Post, it's now called Adobe um, Spotlight Post or something like that. And Adobe is free, and it's for both um, things. So let's just keep going. This is a picture. I've shown this before if you've attended the Women in Ag. This is a picture I took of the Calmore Nickel and the Cape May Ferry two years ago. And I shot this with my Nikon um, D7100. This was shot raw. I can take this and blow this up into a billboard. It's that, it has that kind of resolution. And I thought this was a halfway decent picture. But as I was leaving, I handed the camera to my husband and I said, honey, I want to take, I want to take one with my iPhone. At the time it was an iPhone 5. I want to take it with my iPhone so I could tweet it. This just would be easier. So he held my camera and I took the same shot or two seconds later and this is what I got with my camera. So this is my iPhone shot, and uh, Adobe Spark, thank you, you're right. Um, so this is the iPhone, iPhone 5, and I thought, in, to my aesthetic, this is the superior photograph. Um, it just, it's amazing, isn't it? That's straight out of an icon, that's straight out of uh, the iPhone. Um, and some of the, the Android cameras, same thing, just phenomenal cameras. So I took this and I put it into Snapseed and I increased what's called the HDR. Some of that is built into your phone. It's called high dynamic range. Don't use it on your phone. Turn that off on your phone. You want to use it in Snapseed later. And what this does is this can really, doesn't work for everything, but it really works for landscapes. And if you have any kind of clouds or sky, and uh, clouds, of course you have sky, any clouds in the sky, um, it's really cool for that. It's not so cool for people, but it's nice for landscapes. And you can, and we'll play with that and show you. So I just want to show you that that's, you know, camera, that's DSLR, iPhone, and that's tweaked a little bit with, with the Snapseed app. This is just an example of water logs, just as plain old blueberries on a, on a, on a tablecloth. And what it can look like with some water coloring, with a watercolor app. This is a picture of a center pivot irrigation. We've all seen them. It's kind of a blob picture, not, not too many clouds in the skies. And then this is my rendering of making it look vintage. If you were going to say you know, something about your family's history and your, your farm history, you can make it look old. So this has built-in light leaks. It has some bleeding on the edge which is just a cool, it's a popular way of, of, of showing photographs. And then this is actually it's almost the same photograph, done a little different technique, and I've actually just gone down with the settings that I've used. So I'm gonna go quick. This is just my cat. This is using Hipstamatic, straight out of the cat iPhone, and using Hipstamatic. So a little bit of the sepia tones, pulls out the blue eyes. There's a little vignetting going on. Uh, but this is like a three-step three step procedure to make that photograph look like that. Uh, I want to shout out a photographer named Lloyd Lee Height, who is, um, visit him. He, this is pictures of, he goes around just taking pictures, he's driving by the, the BCs, and he's using Hipstamatic here, and it really kind of gives a very warm, rich look to what might look like otherwise an ordinary snapshot. Um, this is a, an app called Tangled FX. We probably won't have time to look at that today, but this is what it does. It takes a photograph 
and you can do swirls, you can do the stained glass looks, you can do, it really works well with flowers and it works well with pets, uh, not so much anything else, um, but just a lot of fun and just something that you want to play with. This is an animal, this again, the same photograph with my cat and I have a, a photographic blog that you can look at, I actually take you through the steps and this is what it looks like when I put it through Tangled FX with a small details feature. Um, again, this is just a, an agave, um, picture of an agave succulent and um, some of the renderings that it can do with, with Tangled FX. This is a picture of the New York uh, Botanical Gardens, Christmas Eve. I went up there this past Christmas and that's straight out of the camera on the left. And I put it through Snapseed to HDR it a little bit, up the saturation, and then I set it through in light for the, for the framing of it. So um, you can combine your pictures. So it really takes something that looks a little bit, uh, it was okay photograph, it makes it look, it really makes it pop a little bit. These are just some basic, uh, to make your photographs matter on the web, to make people stop for a second and look. You want to use contrasting colors if you can, and I'm sorry I'm going to go by this fast because I really want to show you the app. Think about using negative space. Negative space is really great when you want to put a, um, a saying or a quote over a photograph or off to the left or to the right. Um, use your rule of thirds. It's not a hard and fast rule, but a lot of times you want your, your subject to be in that intersection somewhere. You don't always have to do that. So a portrait of a person is better off sort of in here. This is particular example is a good, good example of negative space and the rule of thirds. They ask any 4-H or they'll, and then perspective. This is the one thing I tell budding 4-H photographers, don't just take everything straight on. Pay attention to where you are. I love this here. She's real, I, I couldn't get in that position if I wanted to, but she's going that extra length to take a picture of something. Step on a step stool, step on a chair safely, step on a ladder. I took this picture. I was up on a, a six foot ladder shooting down. Here, here I was on a mezzanine shooting down, they were looking up. That's flattering for people too. But try taking pictures from a different angle. It's so much more interesting. And what's nice about digital photography is you can take tons and tons of it. It doesn't cost anything. Um, some do's and don'ts, I'll let you read this on your own. Um, and some, with some smart cameras, and I'll show you, you'll see a lot of people with, when they have their cell phones, um, cell phones out, they, you'll see them pinching to zoom out because they want to get Firefly. If you were at Firefly, you want to take a picture of something and you're far away. So what does everybody do? They take their fingers and they stretch it out and they zoom. Don't do that. Don't do that. Crop it afterwards and zoom it that way. Because when you zoom with a smartphone, you're using what's called digital zoom. It's not an optical zoom. In other words, that lens is not moving in and out. So you actually are ruining the photograph, you're making it less powerful than if you keep it, take it home, crop it, crop it tight to the subject you wanted to zoom, you'll get it, you'll get it much higher quality. It's the one biggest mistake I see everybody making. Don't zoom the photo. And I don't like flash photography on cell phones. And the one thing I think the iPhone did bad was um, the iPhone 6 is they changed their flash. It's horrible. This is an example here on the right of a Twitter feed. Earlier on, extension was tweeting. We're not, of course, we were answering questions here, but it's boring if you don't have a photograph. Everybody today, you want to stop somebody in your tracks, you want to put in a photograph. This is an example of a meme. So we only have 140 characters in Twitter. So why not get some of that out of the way and put it on the photograph, the where, what, when, and how. Maybe um, put that on the photograph and then you've saved yourself. You can also credit people. You can put their photo by, you know, Michelle Walford. And then you don't have to waste your space up here. The shorter your posts are on social media, the better. Here's an example 
uh, we were doing a uh, farm succession plan. So we wanted to save space for the link so they could register. So all the details of when that is and who it was for and what time and all that are on the meme. So this is a meme, an example of using memes. So let's get to the, um, so I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to go back and I'm going to stop my video. I want to be on camera and I'm going to share my screen again. At this time I'm going to go on my iPad, which um substituting as my phone. So let me go share screen, share iPad, share screen. Right, I have to sweep up. Okay, so now you should all be looking at my iPad. And I'm going to get out of Twitter. And there's there's an example of Twitter. Um, if you look through the feed, what you're seeing now is almost everybody is using images. So this is an example of if you're in Twitter chats or tweet ups, they're using memes for the, to post pictures. But you have to have you have to draw that attention um, with people, and so a really good photograph is is crucial. So let's go to the apps. So here's my photography apps. I have one, two, three. I've gone quite a bit further. Um, so I'm going to show you Snapseed. Snapseed is free, 100%. If you haven't downloaded it, please do. It's just, it's just the bomb. It's just the greatest thing. So you won't be able to see my fingers, but what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to um, show you the interface. I'm going to open a photograph. And I'm going to open a photograph that maybe it's the kind of photograph we all take. So I'm going to go into Snap It, Map It. And here's one I took of our extension agent. He's an irrigation specialist. His name is James Atkins. He was speaking to people and he was under a tent. He's wearing sunglasses. He's also wearing a baseball cap. Um, most people in agriculture wear a hat. What does a hat do? It puts shadow on the face and then he's under a tent. So this is a picture of him on the job doing his thing, but it wouldn't be suitable to put on the web because he's, he's sort of sh uh, in shroud. So what happens is you, you'll get this, you will see at the bottom, there is a button. Let me see if I could. The bottom right, there's a button there that shows with a, a circle with a, with a pencil. And you want to click that. And this is going to give you your, your uh, toolbox. And the first ones here are your essential tools. This is where you're going to uh, fix your image, lighten it, crop it, etc. And then you have some filters down below. And the ones that I would like you to pay attention to is the HDR scape. We won't use that on James. We just want to kind of make him a little bit more visible. So I'm going to go into Tune Image. And when you when you get into Tune Image, and what you can't see what I'm doing right now is I'm moving my thumb on the side up and down. And when I do, I'm getting brightness, contrast, saturation, ambiance, highlights, shadows, and warmth. If I select one and then move my finger to the left and to the right, I am so you can see brightness now is at level 35, then it's level 72, it's going down. So I could just brighten up the whole image and then you see him, but then what happens to the rest of the image? It's washed out. So one of the things I do if we're starting at we're starting at zero, which is neutral, is I don't just go to brighten first off. What I do is, and I don't do auto adjust either, forget that. What I'll do first with, with a dark face in an otherwise correctly exposed picture is I will go into shadows first and I will swipe to the, to the right and it's only going to kind of brighten where the shadows are. And then up at the top right you'll see a little white box and a dotted dotted box and that's your before and after. So you can see 
Uh, that's what it looked like before. That's what it looked like afterwards. So it really hasn't affected the green, the wheat field, the cheese beyond. It has lightened up um, mostly it. It's not really affecting the underside of the tent either. So I would say that that's not bad. I might go up a little bit more. And then I'm going to say that's good. And I'm going to hit the arrow down at the bottom and save that. Now I might go back in, hit that button again, go back into tune, and I might just titch up the brightness a little bit. And that I might, but what if he was still really dark? So there's another, uh, there's another option you can do. And so let's just hit OK. I'm going to hit, the, I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to go to selective, and selective is the third bar at the bottom on the left. And selective allows you to select a particular area of the photograph and you can either brighten darken it so you'll see the little plus sign at the bottom and i'm going to click that and then i'm going to touch his face all right and now you see a b right by his mouth i'm going to move the b over oops, there it is i'm going to move it over to his face it's kind of telling me, okay, where do you want to zero it in? It's going to zero it in right there by his mouth. And now I'm going to swipe to, I'm going to swipe my fingers right. So I'm going to go oh, towards his other hand. I'm going to swipe. It's, it's in brightness. And now you'll see on the, on the top of the D, you'll see a little green bar. You see how it's, I really made it bright and I've really made it dark but I've skipped a step. When you put the B on, on someone, you then want to pinch. And again, you're just going to have to trust, you're going to have to visualize this. I'm putting my two fingers together in the middle of the photograph and I'm pushing out. And you see everything's turned red. That's the area that's going to lighten if I left it like this. So I want to actually bring that area down to just his face. And I, maybe I don't want his hat in the mix, so I'm going to drag that B down, maybe towards his chin. And I'm going to, wherever it's red is where it's going to lighten it. So you have control over where you'd like to lighten the photograph. If you just wanted to lighten under his brim of his hat, you could do that. And now I want to swipe to the left, and that would brighten that area. I could go really crazy, and you could see what it would do. It, it, it I've hit saturation too. I didn't want to do that. Um, you can see that it really brightened him too much there. So you just want to play with this a little bit, but this is where you can just tweak a certain part of his face. So I'm going to save that. And the only other thing I would do, since I've lightened everything, I might want to go in. I'm going to hit the edit button again. And I'm going to just go back to tune image. And I'm going to just pump up the saturation a little bit. Just to make those fields a little greener. It will make everything more saturated. I mean, you could overdo it, that would look just too fake. But I might want to pump it up just a little bit. And that's not too bad. I still might want to go in there and brighten it up just a titch like that. What else can I do? Ambiance. What is ambiance? It's it does a number of different things. So you just have to kind of go in here and play with it. When you're looking, when you're doing it with people, you have to be a little more judicious than if you were doing landscapes. Because I, I can go crazy with uh, landscape photography. So the ambiance was fine. I don't think I want to do that. Do I want to warm it up? He's under a blue tent. He might have a blue cast. With warmth, you can type warmth, and you just want to go. You can make it look like a little bit more of a sunny day. You can make it very cool. You can make it very, very, very warm. It's unnatural looking. But I sometimes will go in and pump it up two or three, so just a little bit. 
And again, you just have to go, there's no right or wrong way. You just have to use your own aesthetic. Then I'm going to save that. Not too bad. Now you'll notice up at the top, it says save. And then there's the number three and there's some dots. But if you tap on the number three, it's going to show you now the steps that I've done. I've tuned it. I've done some selective work. And then I tuned it again. If I decided I didn't like that, his forehead looks too bright, it looks like I went in there and shined a flashlight on it, I don't like that. I can tap on that and take that step out without having to redo everything I did. So that's a nice feature. The other thing you'll want to remember with this is with Snapseed, all right, how do I get back to that? Okay, I want to, all right. So I've got rid of that step. So now I have two steps. So I'm ready to save this photograph. Um, here, if you want to do a vignette, I tell people a vignette is, you wouldn't do it really do it with a person. It's great with food photography. It's great with um, uh, nature. It gives you a circle, a vignette. So everything within the circle is either going to be, it has an outer brightness, and an inner brightness. So I don't want to mess with the inner brightness, so I've already taken care of that. But the outer brightness right now, I want it maybe I want it to be darker. I want it to focus on him. So you can see what this is what a vignette is. If you use vignetting, it should be your next to your very last stop. Your next to your last, do everything else first, do vignetting last before you put a frame on it or you're finished with it. Because it's once that step is there, it, 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 you don't want to do that and then HDR it. You want to always do your vignette as your next to your last stop if you're even going to use it at all. You know, it's okay with the vignette. You can get you can look at it. Do I really want the vignette? Or I don't see a problem with it. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save it. So I'm going to say okay to that step. Now here's the next important part with Snapseed. It's now going to I'm now going to save this photograph. And you'll see there's three options. Save will save the copy that's on your device. It will overwrite it. You will not get it back. Do you want to do that? If you don't have another copy of this photograph somewhere, I would advise against doing that. Um, because you can't go back. Snapseed does compress your photographs a little bit. That's the other thing. If this is a five megabyte photograph, it won't be after you've run it through Snapseed. It'll, it'll take it down to maybe one or two. Snapseed does compress. Um, so that's why the original, hey, the original for this, the raw of this is on my desktop at work. I know that. I might be fine with overwriting this, but make sure you know that. So if you save it, and if I go in and I hit save, it's going to do everything, it's going to say, do you really want, it's going to modify this, do you really want to do this? So it does give you that, okay, well, maybe I don't. So I'm going to say don't allow. Now I can go into save and save it as a copy. This will save it as a copy. I can open that back up. It's now in my camera roll. But when I open it back up through Snapseed, it's going to put me in an editing mode and I can go back and I can change and, and continue to work on it as if I never saved it. The last one is the one I use probably most often is I export it. So this it gives me a brand new copy. I can't go back in and change it. It gives me a finished product, but it doesn't re-erase the original. So save a copy just allows you to come back in, say you're in the middle of editing a photograph and your husband or your your wife says, hey, look, honey, we got to get going. Let's go. So you close off your computer, but you want to kind of go back and finish it. That's what save a copy would be good for. It, it leaves you where you are with your steps, and then you can go back in and take something out, put something back in. So those are the three options that you have when you're doing Snapseed. Let's take another look at what Snapseed does. We're going to open the device. We're going to go into the Snap It and App It uh, folder. And I just want to show you what it does to the sky. So this is a picture I took of when I was up visiting my daughter in New York City. And we were in Queens and we're looking over into Roosevelt Island. So this is a halfway decent snapshot. 
It's a nice cloudy day. I just wanted to show you partially cloudy what HDR does. And there's a difference. Look at that. Now that's the default. It always comes in at 50. So there it is without HDR. And there it is with. That's a little, to me, a little fakey looking. But this is really cool if you do any night photography. If you really want it to do an interpretation. So we're not here. This is more artistic. Now. We're not saying this is what it really looked like. But it makes it pop, but I might want to take it down just a little. So I'm just now simply dragging um, my finger across left and right. I can go way up, and it looks almost comical-ish. I can go down to just barely any. So there it is, about 35%. There's the difference. Just makes that makes the clouds. This is really cool for cloud work. So I like that. You know, I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to hit accept. Um, there is also a filter called drama, and drama will do what it says it's going to do. It does drama, gives you four different presets. I use drama sometimes as um, before, if, I'm, if I plan on making a photograph black and white, before I do that, I will add drama. It renders a better black and white than if I had not done it and just made the picture black and white. It puts a little kick, puts a little contrast in it. So, um, so let's let's do that. Let's say I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to go with that. It really now the clouds really look uh, almost. Um, they look very um, sort of with you know, Vincent Van Gogh-ish. So I'm going to save that. And there's something else I want to do. I really don't like all this this dirt and um, uh, that's in the foreground of, of the lawn. I don't really need to have that much lawn. So let's go in and look at cropping. Now when you crop, um, you want to, it gives you some different aspect ratios here. If you keep the original, no matter where you crop, it's gonna keep that same uh, aspect, you know, horizontal and vertical. And it, that's important if you're cropping and you have a five by seven frame and you go doing everything crazy when you get to print it out, it's never going to fit the frame rate. So you want to pay attention to the aspect ratio. You can do free form, which allows you to do whatever you want. I could take that down to, to just that one building if I wanted to. I could do it like that. I can, I'm going to say I don't want that, but that's what, oops, that's what, um, free form is and you can do square you could do the din it's just sort of a landscape look but maybe you want to do it and maximize it or optimize it for your facebook timeline so you you could do that which is sort of um, free form facebook timeline there's actually a thing for that but um, but probably something like that would be good for Facebook um, timeline, a little, little bit more elongated. And in fact, I'm going to kind of go with that. But I just wanted to show you that you do have choices of the kind of aspect ratio you want, 16 by 19. It's not quite Facebook, but they don't have a Facebook option on here, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it that that would be it. So that's not too bad. I kind of like that. So I'm going to save that. I'm up to three steps now with this photograph. Now I want to maybe think about black and white. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at black and white. And there you have it. You can see you have different, that's pretty dramatic, right? So it gives you some presets, but within this preset, you have the option of changing it at any time you put up and down is going to give you your menu choices and then left and right is going to give you your your how much power of that you wanted so i play around with this kind of stuff quite a lot so that's kind of cool i think i'll save that you also have color filters so um, if you use a green filter it's going to take out some of the um, contrast in the green lawn so you have different filters. So there's a yellow filter. It makes the sky blue or red. So each of these, excuse me, each of these filters do something different. There's a blue filter that really takes away from the sky. 
I kind of liked it the way it was at neutral, so I'm going to save that. And how do you get that sepia tone, that nice warm vintage look? Well, you want to go back and go into tune image. And now this is where that warming feature will come in. You can go up to warm and swing it over. So now I've got a little bit of a, a sepia tone there. Like that. I like that. I think I'll keep it. I'm almost ready to wrap this up. I'd say I might want to add maybe like a little crazy frame to it or something that makes it look old. Now you have other frames that will do, the other filters that will do that. And these are very similar to what you see on most other programs. Instagram has them. Vintage is going to um, maybe give it a more truer um, I'm looking at that. That's that's almost a little bit better looking as far as the sepia look. Uh, but you have different styles here that you can play around with, depending on the feel of the of the image. I kind of like that. I'll keep that. I'm up to six steps now. And Retrolux is going to give you all your light leaks, your fading. Um, I, I looked at pictures the other day of, of my parents in the 1960s and all the colors is starting to bleed out. It, it puts spots on the photographs and all that kind of stuff. And to each his own, I don't particularly like that, but you have, have those options. So I'm going to go, lastly, I'm going to go into um, frames. And with frames, I'll start you off with, with a suggestion here. It's on a number 10. You can change the width. You can really make it look um, art studio, very urban looking. You can pull it back. So that's your frame choices. When you're on your frames, and you'll see at number 10, you'll see a little X. That means within that design set, there's three or four options. So if you click them, you'll see them changing just different ways that the scratches or the bleed outs are going to appear. So you have half of them are all with a pretty much a basic white look. And again, you sweep, you can sweep up back and forward. Um, so half of them are white and then the other half have the black. So there's a black frame. So depending on where you're going to, what you're going to do with this, whether you want to have that look or not. I don't particularly like that. And what's, what's so nice is that it's, there's no right or wrong. It's what's your aesthetic. So it's, it's you're painting over a piece of work and making an artistic statement with it. Um, I might go with something like that. Let's see if I, I might go spare. So it looks kind of urban. I might pull it in like that. And I'm going to hit done. And now I have the choice of saving it. I've done seven steps. I can go back in and remove one without having to go back, back, back. So that's nice. If I wanted to review what I did, here's all the things. And I might say, you know, I really don't like the way I cropped that. I want to take that out. So you have those options. But I'm happy with it. So I'm going to tap that. Oops, I'm going to hit. You can add that. Okay, you hit the enter. Okay, you hit the arrow. And then I'm just going to save. I don't want to save over the original because I'll lose it on this device unless I have it somewhere else. Um, I don't think I'm going to edit it anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead and export it. It's going to go through all the seven steps, and it's now sitting in my camera roll right there, and it's in my photo stream. So that is Snapseed. Uh, it does a lot of really neat things. Um, um, this was a picture here of a young lady. Uh, took it yesterday. Uh, she was at Hopkins Farm. She's under their tent. It was raining out and she's dark and it was a portrait of her, not of the menu. So I had gone through and there it is and corrected it using the techniques I showed you. So it brightened her face a little bit. So 
that's the kind of thing I think that's um, really important. Um, so let's, do we have any, I'm going to open up the uh, chat pod. Are there any questions about Snapseed at this point? I could probably spend a lot of time on this. Um, here's a picture, for instance, of, of a farm that I did. This was um, Penn's historical Penn farm. And I I made it into a, this is not here. I made it into a, his, a vintage looking um, farm. This is a, um, let me see what else we could do. Yeah, so anyway, that's Snapseed. You, what you want to do is take a couple of photographs of it, play around with it, and just get to know the program a little bit. I wanted to show you uh, brush strokes real quick. So brush stroke is a painting app that is good for iOS and Android. So let's open up brush stroke. And you can take a live picture or you can pull up a photograph. I don't want that one. So let me find a photograph that um, would work. So I'm going to go into, let's just try this little cat right here. So I'm going to select the photo. Select photo, camera roll, select photo. All right, why is it not working? Okay. Oh, there we go. So I don't want to crop it. Am I in? Let's see if I'm in the right one. Under brush stroke again. Brush stroke. I'm going to select the photo. I'm going to go. Hmm. Camera roll. Here we go. I'm going to go to snap it and app it. And I'm going to pick uh, this photo and I'm going to select it. Now, here we go. So now it's painting this. So now you see the parrot. And the first ones are oil paintings. You can go in and adjust the size of the brush, but I find the defaults are, are just fine. So these are just different ways of painting. I don't like that too much. And there's watercolor type techniques. Some are sketched, some aren't. Some don't render as well. You'll find out that landscape ones look better with certain features. Sort of a Monet. This one's called medium. So that's more like a little bit of an illustration. So think about, for instance, a picture of your farm that you could turn into a painting and sell it. You could put them on note cards. So you could have like a little thank you notes that you wrap up with raffia and, and print. Um, so there's a lot of the neutral ones I don't like too much. Here we go is, this is called hatched so good simple so now we're getting into just different ways of illustrating this you can add your signature to it so let me see if I one that I like there's lead pencil there's bold So let's say I wanted to go with that. If you touch the A, you can sign your name with your finger. And I'm going to clear it. And so I could just, I would use a, a stylus. I'm using my finger right now. But there's my signature. And I can move that over here if I want. I can make it smaller. Uh, so you're giving yourself credit for being the artist. It's my photograph. I've decided to tweak it and jazz it up. I can hit done. And these could be printed off and used for, for you know, pictures of your farm, uh, keychains, all kinds of different things that you can make into products. 
for your for your business. Um, fruits and vegetables look beautiful with this with this set. Absolutely gorgeous. This is um, I'll give you an example. This is a this is a picture I took of my Siamese cat and. Um, Oh, I, I use Snapseed with this. Okay, so this is a Snapseed example, but you can see I took it by his window. He was smelling the daffodils, but his face is dark. So I went in with Snapseed and uh, brightened all that up. So that is the that really the big value with Snapseed. The only thing that Snapseed does not have is red eye correction. I don't know why. I usually go to Avery and do it there. Um, another example of, let's see if we've got, um, so we can do um, another app. So let's try this one. So we'll go to photography. And I'm going to show you Photoshop Fix. Now, Photoshop Fix is, um, okay, we don't want that. Okay, I was doing some pictures for a friend of mine. All right, so we're going to go into. Um, let's see here, I'm going to go into camera roll. I'm going to have to do this. It's not shot here. Here she is. Okay. So I took this, this is creative commons. So I'm not tampering with anybody's copyright. So this is a young lady and I'm now what maybe wants to do some editing. So there is a, um, this is a really cool feature. I'm going to go into liquify. And when you hit liquify, you will have a button over here on the right called face. I'm going to touch that. And you'll see now there's circles on her face, two on her eyes, one on her nose, two on her cheeks, one on her mouth, one on her chin. So I'm going to touch her, touch one of those spots. And this will come up. So now her smile, I can touch that and I can make her smile more. I can make her, I can get rid of her smile. So you have a group shot and there's that one relative that isn't, looks like they're mad at the world when everybody else is smiling. You can do that. So you can go down, you can go up. And it's a pretty, pretty, I think it does a pretty good job. You can, make her lower lip bigger or bring it up. Isn't that amazing? Uh, her upper lip, plop it up or make it thin. So no more collagen treatments. You can do it all with Photoshop. Um, same with her eyes. I can make her eyes bigger. So that's the one. Or, well, it does both of them. I don't know why you would want to do one, not the other. So you can make her eyes a little bigger, or you can make them a little smaller. Um, you can also do the jawline. So this is, watch this. So she's going to lose about 10 pounds. It just elongates her jawline, and, or you can widen her up. But it's a really, it won't work for every photo, every portrait. It's best with hands on but you can um, do it automatically using, using that. You can also go into warp and warp, warping is done all the time. This is what, if you ever see those Photoshop fails um, where people cut off an arm or they, they make people's thighs. I mean, almost every magazine cover, and I'm not getting into the ethics of this, um, some people want to have it done. Some people don't. If you're doing this for someone, you know, you shouldn't be removing people's freckles or warts or moles or age spots without asking them first. A bride might say, please take that off. But if you do it without asking your model, you could run into trouble. So you always want to ask your model. But here you'll have a brush size and it's good to work with, with a big brush size. And then your warp brush, what it does is you can, you know, push. I can come in here and just push, push, push in her 
and you will see people it's done it's done very easily on um people who are like for instance if, if i was going to take a picture of me in a bathing suit at the beach i would definitely come in here and like oh my god tighten up my arms or tighten up it won't work against if someone's against a brick background because when you when you're warping you're also going to move the background a little bit. All of a sudden, you'll see the brick, the brick mortar lines will start to swirl, and, and that's how you know someone's manipulated it. But if they're behind, if the if there's trees behind them or flowers or ocean, it's really easy to do. So it's a fun way to practice this. But you can go in and you know tweak people's parts. It's just it's just amazing. So um, that's a Photoshop fix. Uh, it does a lot of really interesting things. Um, you can, they have, let's see, that was, that was, a, that was one I, we had tried at, at a workshop. This is what I did. Um, some of the tutorials, if you, if you watch the tutorials, they will show you how this works. Um, it may be so. But just watch what happens now to, there's a light on the post. They'll take the cooler out. They'll take the stuff that uh, they come along with there. They swipe it, and it sort of blends. They'll take the logo off the tail of the plane. He's making it bigger. And they will go in, and so they're removing that light. And it just takes it right off the pole. There's the logo on the plane. Remove that. It might remove the serial number off the plane. Look, at, it's amazing, isn't it? So it takes a little practice with it, but I can tell you it's uh, an amazing free, 100% free app. So real quick, we're running out of time. The last app I wanted to show you real quick are your meme generators. Um, so what I, I have that in a separate category. The ones I use, and you're right, it's now called uh, Adobe Spark or Spark Post. Word Swag is just a very neat way of um, taking a photograph. It gives you some presets that are free to use, but it's always in square format. I'm going to go into my camera roll. I'm going to take a photograph um, that I took right here, and I don't want to crop it. And it gives you with the text, it gives you a Twitter preview. If you notice, if you are on Twitter, when you tap on the photograph, it's saying this part under the dotted line, this part above this dotted line are going to show up in the Twitter preview. Everything else is going to get cut off. Won't get cut off when they tap on it, but they'll get cut off when they um, when it's in the preview. I don't like this, so this is D-bomb, and here's a little bee buzzing. So I'm going to tap this because I don't like that style, and I'm going to say, um, I'm going to clear that off. I'm going to say B. They don't call it B-bomb for nothing. So I'm going to type that. Uh, it's not letting me do that. Okay, they don't call it B-bomb for nothing. And I could do a quote, I could quote Emily Dickinson, I could do anything I wanted to do. All right, so I'm going to hit save and close. And that's the default text, but I don't like that. So I want to go in and do that. So this is called wet paint. And within wet paint, it's going to give you, um, and you can shrink it, and you can turn it, and you can reposition it. You can put your logo in here. There's a uh, thing for that. So you can, um, you can go disco. So you can see all the different, um, these, are, these are great for when you have a workshop or an event, you want to call out a particular date. You can go Victorian. Let's see, you have these, which are, um, you can change the color. You can multicolor it. I don't. I want to show you paper hearts. They have one's called very, very plain, and you can. So it's just really, really a nice 
There's the Victorian one, and there's different options there. It gives you the little flourish at the top and the bottom. And so you can create a logo with that, or you can create some kind of an overlay or just an inspirational quote or, or something like that. So that is, um, and you have to, if you want another one, you have to go in and re-swag it so that the one you picked will stay there and you can't get rid of it. Then you want to add a second layer. Say you wanted to add a photo credit, you could do that and change the font. So that's Word Swag at $3.99. It's probably the one I would definitely recommend getting if you have an iPhone or iOS. Adobe Spark Post is the same thing. They give you some templates. They give you suggestions on business, craft, lifestyle, etc. But they have all these different templates. You can use your own photo or you can use the photos that they suggest. Uh, so if you wanted to use the rainbow flag, for instance, and make a comment on your social media about we are all Orlando or something like that, you could go in here, tap on that, you could change and remix it, and you could change the font, you could change the theme, you could change the photo, you could change the uh, animation of it. So here you could just go in here and, and back that out and change it. You can make it smaller. You can do whatever you want to do with it. Um, when you go to share Adobe Spark, there will be an Adobe Spark watermark on the bottom. And if you want that to, um, if you want that to go away, you have to share. You have to tell somebody about Adobe Spark, and then they take that off. So, uh, really, the Adobe line, the Photoshop line, it, it's really wonderful. You do have to have an Adobe email for that. So, um, a sign in. So that's, we're running out of time. I'm going to stop sharing. Couldn't get to everything. I'll open it up to questions and see if anybody has any. I could have just done one, one workshop on apps, but uh, just on one app alone. But are there any questions? I'm, gonna un, uh, I'm not going to unmute everybody, but uh, it's a new message. Good, hope that helps. If anybody has any questions, um, the contacts on that PDF, um, my email is my last name, it's Walt, I'll type it here, it's Walford. Um yeah, they're, I think they're going to post it. I'm going to um, save this, and then it's going to get uploaded. And um, one question on shooting with background with Android. Is there a way to blur the background on a close-up of a shot? Yes, yes. Um, so what you would do is I'm going to keep this going, um, and we can edit it, or if you want to stay around, I'll, I'll be glad to stay around. So let me go back to sharing it. All right. So for, for blur, there are some uh, apps that just do nothing but blur backgrounds. I might have one. Um, After Light's a really good one. Um, Easy Photo, Dark Room, Reflex. Some of these won't work, by the way. They're, they're designed for iPad, for iPhones. You can. If you have, for instance, if you have, I don't know how many of you have an, I, an iPad, but for instance, Instagram is not an iPad app. Um, if you want to go to your, if you want to go here, iPhone only, and then I can download Instagram, but it won't show up if you just search for your iPad. So you have to go to iPhone only and then download it on your iPad. Just so you know that um, not every app will work correctly on an iPad because it's designed for an iPhone. Um, most of them will work just fine, but um, um, let's see. So you said talk about blurring a background. There is an app for that. I thought I had it. It might be on my phone. But yes, what I would do is I would go to Snapseed. So let's go into Snapseed. 
and let's open up a picture open uh, my camera roll and let's try to find something where well, these are already blurred let's see if i can find something that's pretty sharp Bear with me a second. All right, so this is not a good example, but here's a picture of a lighthouse on my front yard. And I want this to be, I want the lighthouse to be clear, but I want the, the background to be blurry. So I would go into the edits and they have lens, it's called lens blur. And it's going to default to a circle, but you could stretch this out like that. And the, 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 the default is 30 plus 30, but you have, this is your outer ring here. And then this inner ring where the, say so where this, well, I'm pointing and you can't see my finger. Um, you have three, you have the inner circle, which will stay clear. The next, is called your transition area and then the outside of it is called your full blur. So you will see you have the blur strength, the transition strength, and the vignette strength. So that's your outer outermost ring. So that one I might want to pump that up. So I'm going to go ahead and really blur that all the way to 100%. And then I want to go to transition and I want to take that out. 100%. So there's the, oh, it's, it's been getting it. Let's see here. Inner blur. That'd be cool. Oh, style. Then you have different styles. Okay, so that's going to give you your shape. If you had a flower, you might want to use a star shape. But that's what I would use. I would use the lens blur. There is an app where you just go in, um, and I don't have it with me. Uh, you can do it with Photoshop Fix. I could go in. Oh, there's. Let's see if I got. I'm going to a new picture here. No. On my iPad, I'm going to pick the cat. All right, I'll pick um, that cardinal. And it's already kind of blurry, but I can go in and blur it even more by just going in like this. And you can check the hardness and the strength. So I want to pump that up to 100. I want to pump up the size. And then I'm just, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going across my finger so I can make him blurry. I don't know if you can tell him. But that's what you would do. I'm sw I'm swiping my finger and opacity. Oh, you want to go 100%. So there's ways of doing it. There's quite a few. Um, Kindling brush paint. And yeah, def defocus. There we go. It's called defocus. And there. So now you can see um, I'm on the, uh, watch the watch the beak of the bird. I'm totally defocusing it. So you could just keep going. So on, it's called defocus on the uh, Photoshop fix. Uh, hopefully that helped you. Uh, the list of the photo, uh, the screenshot that's on the um, PowerPoint. So when you look at the, when you get the handout of the PowerPoint, I did a screenshot of the, um, of the apps that I like. I've added a few since, but they would be the ones, um, let me see if I take you back, let me share this again with you so you can see it. Let's see here. I don't think I'm sharing right now where it happened to Zoom. Okay. 
Zoom. And I'm going to share screen, desktop, share screen. All right, so now I'm sharing the screen. This slide here, I've added a few since I took this, but this will give you some of it. LD, for instance, Photoshop Express is just an all-quick, all-purpose one. Snapseed, definitely great. LD will add light flares and will add fog, so it's really cool. After Focus, there, I knew I had it. After Focus is what you want when you want to go in and blur something after the fact. Hipstamatic, really cool vintage look. Filter Storm, just a lot of really interesting filters. Photoshop Mix will allow you to do combined photographs. So you could put yourself, um, you know, flying over the Grand Canyon. You could jump up in the air on your front lawn, take a picture of the Grand Canyon, and put the two of them together. So that's what Photoshop Mix does. And Light is a really nice program. I like that one a lot. Tangled FX does some really nifty things. Camera Plus is highly rated. This one is just different um, tone squirt or squirt. Um, okay. Flicker Stacker has just organizing pictures. There's Lightroom. I'm trying to think here what else is really cool. Um, Facetune is sort of like what we looked like with um, it's a free version. If you don't, if you can't have trouble with the Adobe, that will correct people's faces. So you can go in there and take blemishes out. You can make people skinnier and make them bigger. Um, does that kind of stuff. Um, mixtures. Be Funky is sort of a so is an Avery product. Easy Photo etching. These are all just different different things that they do. So I've added quite a few more since then, but. I'll be glad to make a list of what I do have and what I think of them. But it, actually, if you just go on Google and type in best photo apps for Android, best photo apps for iMac, that's what I do. That's how I found them. So um, I would suggest doing that and you, you'll, you'll get, because they're just cranking them out left and right. It's unbelievable how many more there are. Thank you for watching our archived presentation of our Wednesday webinar. If you would like to see more archived Wednesday webinars, please visit our YouTube channel or to find a schedule of upcoming live webinars, visit our website.